Okay, so the first thing you want to work on is getting a routine down when you're serving. My routine is to step up to the line. Give yourself an inch between yourself and the baseline so you're not fit vaulting. I find one bounce or two bounces is a good place to start. Set, get your racket pointing to the target. Have a good look at the target before you go into your motion of your serve. I'm looking in the middle of the service box rather than uh, to the corners where I'm aiming so I don't give away my position on the surf. I'm going to also point my racket right into the middle of the box. Okay, so I want to start the ball toss nice and low. We're going to have a nice long ball toss rather than a short jabby ball toss. This is going to let us build up the acceleration nice and slowly and we'll get a nice consistent height on that ball each time. Put the ball on the fingertips. If your ball is in the fingertips and you can't throw it with the fingers, a common mistake is having that ball in the fingers where you could potentially throw the ball with your fingers and that's going to lead to throwing that ball back behind you. So with the wrist, lock the wrist out, keep it back, maintain that tension down the forearm all the way through the ball toss. If I start with the hand back and maintain all the way, you'll see that it stays in that position where my fingers are splayed out pointing behind me. We don't want to be using the wrist to throw the ball. Keep the elbow straight. Ultimately we're only going to be using the shoulder to throw the ball up for the ball toss. Once we throw the ball toss up, I want to try and keep that ball toss arm in that vertical position. Completely vertical, up in the air. Until we come up with the racket arm. As the racket arm comes up, as does the right shoulder. Okay, so the right shoulder's coming up and that ball toss arm is gonna help us bring the left shoulder down. So we need to time it. So the left shoulder is coming down and the right shoulder is coming up. And that's gonna give us a shoulder over shoulder rotation rather than a shoulder round the shoulder rotation. You can use the chopper grip for the surf. I like to go a little bit further over towards the uh, an eastern backhand for my grip because I'll have more angle to hit more spin on the slices or the kick serves. But uh, a chopper grip is acceptable. You want to have a trigger finger on the grip and holding it nice and low. So just the pinkies on the bottom of the grip and you've got a bit of the, of the hand off the bottom. This is going to give us as much height as we can get on the serve, but it's also going to, it's a position where the hand has got a lot of movement on the grip. So you can let that grip move inside the hand and that's going to give you a bit more power and a bit more access to spin. Now when we go up into the ball toss, if you're a right eye dominant player, it's important to keep the ball toss in front of you because this is going to keep you facing forwards and keep your right eye on the ball. If you're a left eye dominant player like myself, we're going to come up the side because we can get a bit more rotation into the serve. You want to hold the grip nice and loose, a really relaxed grip is going to stop the vibrations coming down the racket and straight up your arm, which can give you an injury. Also, a looser grip is going to be able to move in your hand, let the racket move in your hand a bit better, which is going to give you more power, more spin. Now we get into the magazine pose at the top here. And this is the position where we're coiling into the serve. If we can coil into the serve, we can unload onto the serve. Now you'll notice when I coil into that serve, I've got a good knee bend. I'm gonna use my legs to push up and into the court. And you'll notice I fell a little bit to the left on that shot. Ideally, we're gonna have our body weight going forwards behind the ball. Now the racket arm is just like a throw. So if you take the ball in your right hand, and throw it over the net, you'll discover your backswing. Some people like to throw a ball and come up around the back in a big loop. Some people will come up the side. Some people will even come up the front before they throw. So you wanna copy your natural throw. My natural throw is gonna come up around the back. So I'm gonna copy that with my racket. We take our racket back and regardless of what your backswing is, it's always going to reach this point where your racket's pointing upwards. 
from this point, this right elbow of mine will come up, which drops the racket as long as you've got a nice relaxed arm and a relaxed grip. And this is the racket head lag. You can start with your racket here in this position. And as you rotate your shoulders, you'll see that the racket drops behind my head. And this is where I'm gonna get a lot of the power from. Now we've got different types of shots on the tennis serve. We've got the slice where I'll come out around the side of the ball. Uh, on the juice side, it's gonna go out wide. So I've gotta make sure I take a little bit off the serve and get a really good angle on that shot so that my opponent's at least taking a couple of steps out beyond their forehand. The second shot is the flat serve down the middle on the juice side. And I'm still gonna aim in the same place, so right in the middle of the box, but this time I'm going to pronate my racket or pronate my forearm to flatten the shot out and hit it down the line. So I'm aiming the same place for both shots. I'm just hitting out without using my forearm. And if I wanna go down the line, I will turn my forearm and pronate into the shot. And the other type of spin is top spin. To hit a top spin shot, you wanna hit the ball a little bit lower down. Let the ball come up, let it come down and then you're gonna hit up on the ball. So your racket needs to still be going up at contact. If it's on its way up, then we can, we can produce topspin by brushing up the back of the ball. You can imagine if I'm at the top of my stroke, the racket levels off, turns, and I've lost any upwards motion on the shot. So by hitting it lower down, as the racket's still going up, I can brush up the back of the ball and generate topspin. In addition, on the topspin shot, I need to activate my legs a bit more, make sure that I'm pushing up into the shot. Everything's gonna be moving up at contact. Now, the higher the ball comes in from on the kick serve, the higher it's going to bounce. So I need to be aiming a good six to 10 feet above the, above the net when I hit my shot, so I'm gonna be hitting the ball up and using the spin to bring it down. This shot is going to be used exclusively to the backhand because a high forehand is easy, is an easy return, but a high backhand is much more difficult. Once I've hit my shot, my body weight's going forwards into the court and I'm landing on one foot inside the court. Into the court, one foot, step, recover into my split step, ready for the next shot. Landing on that left foot, we're going to have a position called the arabesque position. It's a ballet term. And the arabesque is landing on one foot after my shoulder has rotated all the way around. If you can land in that position balanced, then you've got your balance on the shot correct but an additional step will be taken forward so you can push off and recover back to the middle there are two different styles of serve you've got the serve like Roger Federer where your feet are apart you want a nice little spacing nothing much more than shoulder width apart you'll be leaning forwards and hitting that shot off two feet or you've got the position where your feet might start a little bit further apart and you bring the back foot in to meet the front foot. The biggest serving styles in history have been the ones where the back foot comes in. So you've got two feet in front. This is just because the ball toss can be a little bit further in front at contact. You get your body weight through it a little bit more, but it's a much more physical shot and probably leads to a, a flatter style of um, shot coming through. Um, typically, you'll find uh, right eye dominant players going for the for the step in. I like to have my feet separated apart. I can still jump off both feet, and I think it's more suited to a left eye dominant player as well, being able to get a little bit more rotation into the shot, and subsequently more spin.